All right, my friends. So let's talk about the next identifier that we're going to use to locate our web elements. And that's called XPath. XPath is a very phenomenal way that we're going to locate our elements because it helps us to locate the elements even when there are no unique properties. I mean, there are almost always unique properties, but a lot of times using something simple like a uh, link text or an ID or a name is not possible. And so that's when we use XPath to dig down to the element exactly that we want. The standard definition for XPath is that it's a standard navigation tool for XML. However, XML and HTML are very similar for those of you that know what XML looks like. And you guys just learned what HTML looks like. And basically XML looks exactly the same, except for XML was developed to convey data and HTML was developed to display data. So kind of a different purpose of each one, but they're both structurally very similar. In fact, almost the same minus a few key differences. So if you look at a standard HTML, that's what XML looks like. But anyways, because of that, those similar structures, we can navigate HTML using XPath. So let me show you guys some examples. Let's pull up our friendly qtptutorial.net slash automation practice page. And then I'm going to come over here, grab this highlighting tool, and I can hover over this button. And rather than using CSS here, I'm going to select XPath. Rehighlight again. And you guys can see here that this is the XPath that was provided to me by the tool. When I highlighted this element, this is the XPath that was given. And now this XPath, you can see it's pretty long, right? So what it does is it digs down into each of these sections until we get to the right place. So for example, it starts with this ID post. So that comes up all the way up to here, right? So then it takes the next child and comes in here and then in there and then inside of here and see how it keeps getting the area keeps getting smaller. And then inside of that area is something else. And then inside of that area is something else. And then inside of this area is a button. And inside of that is finally our click me link that we want to click upon. So this is what's called a relative XPath, but it's a very long relative XPath. An absolute XPath would actually start at the very top and then keep drilling down. This one skips a few divs. It skips a lot of divs and it actually starts at this post ID, but an absolute XPath would start all the way here and then keep coming down until it gets all the way down to that element right there. So absolute XPath is obviously the easiest way to identify our element. The problem is that it's very long and that any change in the structure will break the locator. So for example, if you look at these two buttons, let me highlight this button and then take this control A, control C to copy it over into my notepad. Put that over here for you guys. And then, so that's this button, right? Button number one. Let me put button number two. Now, check out these two buttons compared to each other. Do you guys see how they're almost exactly the same? The only difference is that this is form two and this is form one. Their location is different in the website because one is above another. But what if I was to move this button over here on the side or move this XPath 2 button on top or move it way on top or even get rid of this one. If that were to happen, this would no longer be true because right, if you imagine that this is the button that we want, but now this button got moved down here, this would be its new address. You can think of this as like the home address, right? If we want to go to this house, the family in that house has moved to a different place. When you come here, you're not going to find the family that you want because you have their exact address. Instead, what you need is a relative way to figure out where the family lives 
and then go to that location, right? And that something, a good analogy there is if you had the family's phone number that you wanted to visit and you say, hey, what's your address? And then they would tell you whether it's this one or this one, it wouldn't matter. But that's where relative expats come in and help us make our jobs much easier rather than using absolutes. And absolutes, like I said, are very easy, but they are bad and dangerous. And when elements get shuffled around, which they always do, unless you're working on a really bad application that never changes, you should use relative expats. Okay, so don't use absolutes. They're just good to know, but we're going to learn how to use relative expats extremely well.